I'm Sarah, the nutritionist for Optimal Body Balance and Naturopath Health Center. And today, for this recipe, I'm going to show you how to make crunchy chicken tenders. Um, this recipe uses the orange vegetable puree, which has sweet potato and carrots in it. So make sure you watch the puree video if you're not sure how to make that. The first step in making the chicken tenders is to make the breading for the chicken tenders. So you could do a store-bought breading, but this one has a little more nutritional punch to it. So I've already started combining the ingredients for the breading. In this large measuring mixing bowl, there is a cup of breadcrumbs, which I like to use the panko breadcrumbs, um, just a personal preference, but you can use whatever you'd like. And also a cup of wheat germ, which you can find in the cereal aisle. Sometimes it's called cereal germ. Make sure you get the unsweetened kind. And there's also a teaspoon of salt in here. The last ingredient we need for our breading is almonds. So you want a cup of blanched and slivered almonds, which I have in the bowl of my food processor here. And I'm going to pulse these a couple of times. Um, you don't want to just leave your food processor running or it will turn the almonds into a paste. You just want to pulse it a few times to break them up and get them to a good texture to add to your breading. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So you can see that doesn't take very long. I'll show you what they look like now that they're all mixed up. You want them about like a floury, breadcrumby consistency. So I'm going to add that to my bowl here to finish up the breading and then give that a mix. Okay, I did a little rearranging here so you can see better what I'm doing. The next step for making these chicken tenders is to um, cut your chicken breast into chicken strips. So I have two breasts here, one that I've already sliced into chicken strips. This one still needs to be done. I trimmed the fat off of it already. And so you want about one pound, which happened to be about two of this size of breasts. So I'll just show you, it's very simple. I like to start at the fatter side of the chicken and put my knife at a little bit of an angle and you want to make about one to two inch chicken strips and just try to make sure that they're all about the same size so that they cook at the same rate. So just working your way down the breast, trying to make them a uniform size. So you should get quite a few chicken strips from one pound of these skinless boneless breasts. And you always want to use a separate cutting board and a separate knife when you're working with raw meat to avoid cross-contamination. So I'm going to wash my hands and my knife now, and then I will come back and show you how to bread the chicken strips and then fry them up. Okay, so the ingredients you will need for the breading before you fry up the chicken, um, you'll need about a half a cup of flour, whole wheat flour here. This is the better breading that we made at the beginning. So it's got the panko breadcrumbs, the slivered almonds that we pulsed in the food processor, the wheat germ, and a little bit of salt. And then we also need to make something to keep the breading stuck on the chicken. So what we have here is our half a cup of our orange puree and two eggs. So I'm gonna whisk these together. And again, you can start with less fruit and vegetable puree at first if you think your children won't tolerate it and work your way up to a half a cup. Oops, I have a little bit of eggshell in there. Let's pick that out. My second egg. I'm just gonna whisk this up with a fork real quick. And this is what's gonna make our breading stick to the chicken. And you could do this um, a day before you want to actually make the chicken strips. You could slice them into strips and bread them and keep them in the fridge in a parchment lined Tupperware so they don't stick and cook them the next day if you wanted just to make the whole process a little 
easier and faster. All right, so that's pretty good. Got that. So what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna take a little chicken strip and first dredge it in flour. Then you pick it up, shake off the excess coated in the egg and vegetable puree mixture. Again, shake off any drips and then pat it with the bread mixture, breadcrumb mixture that we made earlier. So it's nice and coated in that breading. And then lay it on a tray or a large plate that you have nearby so you don't have to fumble for that with messy hands. And I like to try to Okay, so our chicken is all breaded and ready to go. There's all of our strips. I've heated two tablespoons of oil in my large skillet here. And you want to make sure you have a plate lined with paper towels ready, as well as a tong so that you can flip. So I'm just going to put as many as I can fit in here. And you want to cook them for about three minutes per side. All right, so I'm gonna let those go for three minutes, flip them, do another three minutes, and let them drain on the paper towel. All right, so these look like they're done. Of course, you might wanna cook you know, any fatter ones or ones that didn't seem to get as brown a little bit longer. And always cut open one of them before serving to make sure that you cooked them all the way through. So I'm just going to let them drain on paper towels for a little while before eating. And then you can add a little bit more oil to your pan and wipe it out a little if you want before doing the rest of your chicken strips. But as you can see, it's easy and simple. And your kids will love it, so I hope you'll try it.